Uh, I just really want to thank uh, Rick Spielman and uh, Coach Zimmer for giving me uh, the opportunity. Um, for me, playing in the NFL has been a, a dream come true since pretty much the age of two years old. And uh, for me to uh, get the call from the Vikings was probably one of the best feelings I've ever had. So uh, I just want to say I appreciate all of y'all, and um, I can't wait to get up to Minnesota. All right. Thanks, Kellen. We'll go to Andrew Kramer. Hey, Kellen. Um, what was your expectation for today? Were, were the Vikings kind of atop your list in terms of the teams you're expecting to go to? Yes, they they actually were one of the top teams and um, just kind of, I think, just based on the relationship that we kind of had and just how the meeting went, um, you know, I kind of had word that, um, you know, they they really um, like my game and stuff like that and just kind of how I approached the game mentally and physically. Um, so I definitely knew that was a, a opportunity for me to go. And um, so at that point, it was just, you know, playing the waiting game. Um, you know, so it was just a phenomenal opportunity for me. And, you know, I was you know, super excited right now. Mark Craig. Yeah, Kellen, I was just curious, uh, you know, going to IMG and everything. How long have you been training for this day and how long do you think it'll take you to get ready to play at the NFL level? Uh, I mean, my, my dad always tells stories about um, him, you know, having me throw the ball at the age of two. So and then my mom, I always told her that I wanted to play in the NFL um, at such a young age. So, I mean, I feel like I've been preparing for this for um, the longest time. So. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm truly excited and, you know, um, just having the experience that I have playing in the SEC against, you know, the best competition. Um, I think that it's going to make a, a lot easier curve, um, you know, for me than, you know, many other quarterbacks, you know, with the experience that I have. So I'm not saying that I'm, you know, already ready for the NFL, but I'm definitely going to make every opportunity that I have and um, enjoy every experience and learning experience that I can make. Hey, Kellen, you're obviously coming to a situation where they have um, an embedded starter here in Kirk Cousins. How do you approach that in knowing that potentially you could be the guy that's brought on to replace him in a few years? And what do you hope to learn from him? Uh, I mean, I think that's going to be one of the biggest things. And I know, you know, obviously I've never played in the NFL. So I think going in and being able to just grasp information from a guy who's played um, with different teams and has played against the best guys in the whole entire world. Um, I think that that's going to be huge for me. And just, um, you know, just for him to kind of be a mentor and just learn from him, I think it's going to be amazing for me. So um, that, that's going to be definitely one of the biggest things that I'm going to uh, look forward to. One, learning the new playbook, um, but also just being able to learn from Kirk Cousins. It's going to be amazing. Kevin, you, you mentioned that meeting going really well with the Vikings. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Who did you meet with and, and what, you know, really stuck out that uh, made you think it went so well? Uh uh, I met with Clint Kubiak and uh, a couple of other people, um, but I think it was just it was um, one of the first ones that I had. And, you know, I felt like I had a really good meeting with them at the Senior Bowl. Um, so I think just to kind of top off with uh, with the only meeting that I had, um, just kind of, you know, for them to be able to pick my knowledge, understand, um, you know, different schemes that I had, um, you know, with Coach Fisher down at Texas A&M, um, everything that Coach Fisher put on my plate. Um, and just kind of my mental approach to the game, as long as my, with my physical intangibles, I think is something that they fell in love with. So, um, like I said, I, I felt like I had a great, uh, great meeting and, you know, I'm excited to be a Viking. Kellen, you've played in a lot of different offenses from when you started out at Texas and Texas A&M under Kevin Sumlin, you had that you know, air raid style. And then with Jimbo Fisher, it becomes more of, you know, a pro set, a lot of 11, 12 personnel, having all that experience and being able to carry that into the NFL. How do you think that's going to prepare you for handling the depth of what an NFL playbook and offense is going to ask of you? Uh, you know, I think that's huge. And I feel like that's a, another reason why I'm so grateful for Coach Fisher um, just he he allows quarterbacks to have freedom and he gives um, the quarterback everything at the line of scrimmage from, you know, Mike calls different run plays and getting in and out of pass or runs. And um, he really wants the quarterback to be the leader and, the you know, pretty much the offensive coordinator on the field. So um, I think going to um, the NFL and the Vikings offense, um, you know, definitely being able to learn from Coach Fisher, it definitely makes that, um, you know, like I said, a lot easier than, you know, someone else who was maybe in an air raid offense, um, you know, earlier in their years or pretty much their whole career. Lindsay. Hey, Kellen, welcome to Minnesota. Um, I'm just wondering when you think back over your career um, at Texas A&M, is there a game or a moment that stands out as kind of a top memory for you? Mm, I, I would probably say my last game uh, playing in the Orange Bowl, uh, just 
that was my last game uh, out of four years of playing, you know, 47, uh, 47 games playing in, in the SEC. And I think um, just kind of knowing what type of weight was off my shoulders and, you know, one, just kind of all the adversity that I've been through to get to the point um, of that Orange Bowl and to uh, finish off a season at nine and one this past year um, was, uh, I think, it just a true testament to, you know, my character, my leadership and my hard work. So um, I felt like that was probably one of the my best feelings, um, you know, in college and, you know, I look forward to making more memories in uh, Minnesota. Courtney? How do you describe your athleticism and kind of how that translates to your game? I know, um, you know, being behind the offensive line that you were at the last few years and being able to learn to take off more and run and use your feet. I mean, is that something that you feel like over the last couple of years you've incorporated more into your game? Uh, I definitely think so. And I think, um, you know, as Coach Fisher, as I started to get more comfortable in his offense, um, I started to learn, you know, more to uh, throw from the pocket, whether it's pushing the ball down the field or just getting my getting the ball out of my hands quick. So um, I feel like that's a, a huge growth in my game. Um, but, you know, I've always been an athletic person. You know, I ran track pretty much, you know, my whole entire life, um, especially, um, you know, in my earlier years. So um, I always knew what type of athleticism that I had. So being being able to incorporate that, um, you know, whether it's uh, taking off and running or just even on, you know, uh, nakeds or bootlegs, I think it's just going to be huge for me in the NFL. Dave? Hey, Kellen, what uh, quarterbacks in the league currently do you like to follow the most or, you know, sort of try to take pieces of their game into yours? Uh, you know, I would say, um, you know, one of the biggest people I watched who just retired, Drew Brees, was one of my favorites to watch. Um, and then another person, um, Tom Brady, I think is uh, just overall, um, I think you can just pick so much from, you know, his brain, but also just being able to watch him play um, is truly phenomenal. And I feel like just makes him, um, you know, what type of uh, a phenomenal athlete that he is. Um, obviously, we know about, you know, Tom Brady's leadership, um, but I think just his physical intangibles, just how he's able to move in the pocket for, you know, so-called not being an athletic guy. Um, and just being able to deliver with the ball accurately, um, you know, almost every time um, is something that I continue to try to watch and continue to try to learn from to better my game. Lindsay. Two kind of quick hitters here for you, Kellen. One, I'm just curious what events you ran in track since you mentioned that. Um, and then who are you able to celebrate with tonight? Uh, so on the other end of this wall, um, I have like, maybe somewhere around 80, maybe 70, 80 people, um, just re pretty much all family, friends, um, pretty much everybody who supported me since uh, since I was really a kid. I have aunts, uncles, uh, pretty much everybody. Um, and uh, But I stopped running track uh, after my sophomore season, uh, but I ran track up until my sophomore year. I ran the 400 and, you know, in my earlier years, ran the 800. But, yeah, I ran at a state uh, my sophomore year in Texas, um, so that's probably one of my biggest track accomplishments. <laughs> we'll go to Chad, Courtney, and then we'll end with a few questions from Texas media. Kellen, you mentioned uh, Drew Brees being a guy that you watched. Obviously, he was you know known for his accuracy. And I think in this process, some people dinged you a little bit on your accuracy. Is that fair in your eyes? Or I guess what's an area that you think you may have to improve at the next level? Uh, you know, I always think there's room to improve, um, you know, one with accuracy, but also um, consistency. And but I think just, you know, if you look at it, um, you know, literally, I think everyone to a certain extent is um, inconsistent. It's just about um, reducing that inconsistency. So um, I feel like that's just something that, you know, I think one me, but I think everyone needs to continue to work on. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm uh, a guy who loves to learn and I'm sure Kirk is going to have um, so many different, um, you know, tips and tools that he's learned from being in the league. So, I, you know, I always talk about just being able to learn. So that's going to be um, something, you know, very exciting whenever I get to Minnesota. Kellen, how do you view the situation just knowing that? you know, in a year or two, this could be your job and that you are going into a situation where as a higher round draft pick, you're going to be viewed as competition. I mean, has, how did you approach that at points of your, at your during your career, whether you had competition in front of you, behind you, and what's the mindset you need to have knowing that there is a 32 year old veteran um, who could potentially be fighting for, to keep his job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think one of the biggest things, and you know, I, Thing why people, I guess, think I'm so valuable, just the experience that I have and not just on the field, but off the field. And, you know, I feel like one of the biggest things that I learned is, you know, no matter whether you're a starter or a backup or, um, 
you know, any anybody um, is to treat everything like a national championship or a Super Bowl rep. And so um, that's that's the type of mindset that I have, you know, whether it's workouts or going into practice, um, just wanted to do everything um, to the best of my ability and just be perfect. And just pretty much wanted to grasp all types of information, whether it's from um, Kirk coaches or, you know, even veteran receivers who um, have seen so many different things in the league. So um, I feel like that's something that makes me very valuable. And, you know, like I said, I can't wait to get up to Minnesota. We'll go to uh, Greg Sherman from San Antonio. Hey, Kellen, Greg Sherman. First off, congratulations on the uh, pick. Uh, 45 years ago, Tommy Kramer was drafted uh, by way of San Antonio Lee. You played in the same high school district as Lee. Just a thought on following in Kramer's footsteps and Tommy already reaching out to me saying he's looking forward to being able to uh, to help you out on the transition to Minneapolis. Uh, you know, I think it's amazing for me and, you know, obviously a person who born and raised um, in San Antonio, Texas. And, you know, obviously I have a lot of love um, for all the people that one I grew up with, but just the, the city. So I think just being able to, I guess, put on for, um, you know, everyone who supported me throughout this whole entire journey. Um, it, it definitely makes this uh, definitely makes this pick and, you know, Minnesota very special. You were the backup in at San Antonio Reagan in 2013. The starter was some guy named Ty Summers, who's now the linebacker at uh, Green Bay. I was just curious about the fact that you guys were teammates for a year and now twice a year he's going to be trying to sack you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, me and him are, you know, always been pretty close and always had a lot of respect for each other. So, uh, you know, I, you know, it's nothing, nothing like friendly competition, I would guess you would say. <laughs> Last question. Tommy uh, just texted me a little while ago because he was at dinner saying that he was so excited to hear about a San Antonio guy coming up to Minneapolis. Just a thought on being able to when you hear that from Tommy Kramer, who's one of the top quarterbacks to ever come out of here in San Antonio. And he played in the same high school district together that you're going to have that help and, and all that from a very famous guy. Yeah, like I said, it's an amazing feeling. And one, just to know that, um, you know, he's watching and, you know, I have that type of support and obviously a lot of San Antonio people are watching, um, but also just, um, you know, super excited to get up to Minnesota, um, be, just being able to learn and just, uh, you know, it's been excited for a new change. And, you know, like I said, whenever I got that call, it was you know, probably one of the best feelings I had. So definitely super excited. Congratulations. Right. Yep. Thanks, Greg. We'll go to Travis. Hey, Kellen, congrats for uh, almost being done with me. Um, just what, uh, what um, uh, you, uh, you talked about talking with uh, Clint Kubiak. How much of those conversations went with the, the A&M connections between uh, you and his dad? And, and, and did you get to talk a little bit about that, that connection very much? Uh, so during, I guess the evaluation process, um, you know, the A&M, you know, I guess connection or that wasn't, I guess, ever mentioned. Um, but you know, whenever he called me, um, you know, as they're uh, picking me, that was something that he mentioned. And, um, one of the, one of the biggest things I feel like, uh, that he talked about was just, he loved just the way I've battled back from adversity and just, um, was always able to grow and, uh, just being able to have that A&M connection, I, connection, I think it makes it just a little bit more special. Yeah, and I know uh, John Randall was the guy who announced your pick, and he's uh, from Hearn. I don't know if you knew that, but how how special yeah. is it that this kind of small world that you get to this point and you, you kind of can't escape this this part of a uh, part of the country? Uh, I mean, it's awesome, and uh, you know, as he was walking to the stage, a lot of people in my house were um, you know calling him out, yelling out Hearn, Texas, and um, obviously, you know, it being a, a super small town, um, a lot of people um, know a lot about, it, especially if you're you're from Texas, so. Um, just to be able to, uh, you know, hear him call my name, I, I think was just even more special.